Good morning, this is Plus TV Africa Off the Press, where we bring you the major headlines from our national dailies and we get into review and in-depth analysis with our guests in the studio. And joining me this morning is Dr. Benga Ogunlela. Thank you, Dr. Benga, for staying with us this morning on Off the Press. Yes, yes, yes. And also still with us in the studio this morning is Edward Israel Ayide. Thank you, Edward, for staying Thank with you. us also Thank on Off the Press. Thank you very much. And we start off with the Punch newspaper, the very first headline in the Punch newspaper, use of electric cars dangerous for Nigeria's economy, says reps, and that you find on page 9 in the Punch newspaper. Economic Council mates Buhari warns of recession, and inflation rate rises to 12.2% highest in months, says the MBS. Oil drops to $28 per barrel, dollar exchanges for 369 naira. Oshomana resumes APC leaves Shoaibu Abdukadri's suspension and recruitment of fresh 10,000 constables begins soon, says Minister. Nigeria's third case attended UK summit with Canadian PM's wife, says friend. London returnee picked by parents at airport taken to Ogba home. And mass gatherings not advisable, Minister tells religious groups. And federal government bars government officials, workers from traveling abroad. Still in the punch this morning, kidnappers abduct ex-Western Region Director's daughter demands 100 million naira as ransom, and reps fought prepaid TV subscription to probe DSTV orders. A laugh mean councils Makinde Oyetola on joint ownership of Lautech. Abiodun apologizes to Oshoba Knox Commissioner for attacking ex-governor. And lastly, in the punch this morning, AFDB suspends two Nigerian companies for fraud and still on the coronavirus situation. Our airports and our, our borders are very critical to us at this point in time. What stringent measures should be in place? We see countries like Ghana and South Africa president coming out to, um, for, on the nationwide broadcast telling us um, what they've done and even tra and, and travel ban on, on other countries. What should our government be doing at this point in time, Dr. Bengala? Uh, basically, I'd say same goes for here too. There's a need to create more awareness. Uh, same stringent and strict measures at the airport with regards to uh, restrictions in movement, inflow of people from certain areas as so chosen, uh, proper data gathering and information and record keeping as regards people who come in and they're going out. Um, if they're also transiting time here, those information need to be also documented so that we can actually follow through and actually track progress on these individuals. If these measures are put in place in line with other countries across the globe, I think it will put us in a better perspective in managing or curtailing or condoning the, uh, condoning the virus. The, the virus. Yeah. All right, and, and Edward, I mean, um, Oshoma resumes and APC leaves Shaibu Abdul Kadri's suspension. <laughs> let, let, me, let me just have your two cents on this, um, finally. It's, um, it's, 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 it's been very, very interesting, yes. the APC crisis yes. uh, presently. And I think one thing that, beyond the party politics, one thing it has shown as well is that the Nigerian judiciary uh, does need some overhaul in the understanding you've seen. Uh, Oshomole got... Uh, suspended by one mm -hmm. court and then he ran to another court and it's just shown that uh, there's a lot to be done in terms of governance in Nigeria, yes. especially uh, with the judiciary and I feel in the coming days we'll see more of this uh, crisis unfold, uh, especially as 2023 uh, draws closer. So Now the, the APC has a ruling party, I mean with all of the promises they did make before they, they took over power in 2015, how, how fair would you say they, they've done? How well would you say they've fed? Personally, I'll say the APC has failed on a lot of fronts in terms of what it uh, promised to Nigerians, especially in terms of security, in terms of uh, job creation, in terms of uh, combating uh, uh, poverty, especially at a grassroots level. Uh, we've all, of course, here cases where there were, uh, people will mention that the federal government has initiated things like uh, trader money, uh, end power, and the likes. But the fact still remains that if we say that we are a country that exists or wants to exist in 2020, we can't be focusing on only governments to create jobs, yeah. to create opportunities. What should be at the forefront of government's policies should be how do we create an enabling environment for sure. the private sector to create more jobs, to create more opportunities for people. Uh, a lot of people felt that with 
people like Oshiba Joe at the Elm of Affairs, which was what a lot of uh, people perceived would happen with the coming to government of uh, President Buhari, that perhaps the economy would become a bit more liberalized and there will be a lot more opportunities for the private sector to fill in the gaps where government is filling in terms of job creation, uh, creation of opportunities for people to uh, get out of poverty, to get wealth and all that. Like, I think in, in that regard, I'll say they failed considerably, but hopefully maybe over the next uh, couple of uh, couple of years, three years before they get out of office, hopefully they would uh, pick up the ball. All right. Let, let's put on the economy a little bit. Now, um, the, the oil drops to $28 per barrel, and the exchange rate between the Naira and the dollar is now 369 are, are we are we Are we seeing a recession in, in view? I think... Everybody in the and all world. this is attributed to, to the outbreak of yes. um, the, the global pandemic, coronavirus. I think everybody in the world right now is getting ready for a huge financial or economic uh, blowback after, even after the coronavirus is cleared, after the problem is solved and all that. Uh, personally, I feel like the Nigerian government isn't doing so much uh, in terms of... Uh, making sure that there's confidence in the economy, making sure that there's a confidence in the market. Uh, for instance, I was discussing off air about the failure of the president to actually come on air and address Nigerians. Let us know what is happening uh, in terms of the uh, global oil prices that are dwindling. It's not peculiar to Nigeria. It's a global uh, phenomenon. So what is government going to and, do? And to, to, to make mention, the Economic Council did meet with the president to actually mm -hmm. warn um, um, of, of a pending exactly. recession. Exactly. Yes. exactly. Uh, and what I'm saying is that the person that we voted for as our president is, the, uh, is President Buhari. And I feel like you've seen a lot of presidents, Ghana, the US, uh, Norway, everybody is talking to their people. Yes. You understand? Everybody's talking to the people, both in terms of the health implications mm -hmm. and also in terms of the financial and economic implications. Mm -hmm. And what we've seen here is that government isn't talking to us. We're talking to, we're hearing uh, feedback from ministers or hearing feedback from uh, economic council, but the press, the, the person who is the president of the country is not talking to people. And of course, that will make a lot of people feel that government doesn't have a plan in place and people will begin to speculate. You saw the way there was dollar speculation, I think, some weeks back, and yes. people were ordering dollars, and then the, uh, the exchange rate shut up oh. until the EFCC had to step in and tell people to uh, stop ordering dollars. It just shows that there's a failure of leadership it's in terms of It's 369 at the exchange right now. Um, Dr. Wenga, do you want, you want to comment on this? I think, basically, it would, it would affect a lot of things on all fronts. Uh, it's not, like you said, the phenomena is not peculiar to just one country. It's a global thing. And therefore, there's a need to actually inform people to make informed decisions. Now, that's what information does. It makes you take calculated risks. It makes you take the right steps and know exactly what palliative measures should be taken. Yes. Uh, Ostriching at this time really isn't going to save anyone. It is what it is, and it needs to be addressed. It's taking the bull by the horn. It may not be the best approach. However, we need to bite the bullet. All right, and then we'll come to the Nation newspaper this morning. Oil Nation's income may drop by 85%. OPEC, IEA, worried. And that's a huge percent, right? The 85%. Mambila hydropower project site still fishing ground. And Lagos explosion, boy, five, Batu's head injury. Another recuperating. And still on the coronavirus, COVID-19, Buhari, Buhari cancer strips as Nigeria gets third case. And still in the nation this morning, APC will bounce back. Stronger, says Oshomale. And fire raises 20 shops in offer market. And Seed Lautech to one state, says Alafi. Now, it was reported in one of the dailies that um, the federal government officials have been banned from, from traveling out. How much of this, how much, how much of this is actually, what does this really change? What does this, how much of this is a preventive precautionary measure to, to the outbreak of coronavirus? I think what you've basically done is you've just restricted their traveling. You haven't addressed the real issue. Yes. You see, there are, uh, when there is a presentation, there is a root cause, there are symptoms. Now, you can treat the symptoms and leave the root cause. Now, if the root cause is not addressed, it will still keep coming up. So you've held them from traveling, yes. But what of afterwards? Uh, perhaps now there may be some diversion to also ensure that the healthcare system is beefed up and stepped up to deliver 
as they were. The truth is, if the, the onus lies strictly on relying 100% on the delivery of the healthcare system within Nigeria and not taking to external systems for support, I believe a long way before now, we should have been up to par with what we meet uh, in um, developed countries as they were, you know, to help us also checkmate certain occurrences like this. Uh, an endemic or a pandemic as they were is not planned. It happens, it's an emergency. However, you are better well prepared to manage it when your systems or structures in place can accommodate this. So as much as there is a ban from traveling, you haven't addressed the real issue. You know, Doctor, I'm, I'm particular about those coming in because as long as our airports yes. remain open, we have yes. inbound tourism. Exactly. I'm concerned about those really coming in from most of these high-risk countries that have been um, tagged as high-risk countries. So there's something the government should be doing yeah. that they're not doing at this point in time because this third detected case actually came in undetected. True. <laughs> How so. safe are we? Yeah, I, 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 would say, I would say that uh, that is the major problem that mm, we are not mm. uh, facing. That True. is the major problem we are not addressing. Yes. That's where we are actually acting like the ostrich that is putting its head in the sand. Do you understand? There's a lot True. of Nigerians. That, of course, nobody is asking that the Nigerian government should bar Nigerians from returning to Nigeria. Because yeah. uh, we've seen that a lot of Nigerians are leaving Asia, leaving the US, leaving Europe to return to Nigeria because they feel like they'll be yeah, closer to Yeah, but we want to see a case whereby upon a at the airport, they take into an isolation center to quarantine. I mean, they give the 14 days um, um, gestation exactly. period to exactly. see what you, might you, become of you them. You see, I feel, I feel the way we handle the Ebola crisis has made us very, very, very complacent. We feel that we can handle anything. Do you understand? So beyond the regular checks where, where you're entry, when you're arriving at airports, they use the uh, right. thermometer right. to check your temperature, give you hand sanitizer, and all. We're not really making sure that people who are coming into the country are checked. I would expect at this point in time that uh, countries like Italy, like the US, and other uh, places where there's been an ice, uh, ice incidence of the coronavirus, sure. that we should put a temporary restriction on people coming into Nigeria from those countries. Okay. Do you understand? Unless it is very, very essential. essential. Unless yeah. it is a Nigerian coming back home from maybe a conference or something. Do you understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I, feel, I feel we still have a long way to go. Uh, let's take a look at the Vanguard newspaper. APC Oshomele resumes suits for peace, says no crisis in the National Working Committee of the APC. And that is still left to be seen. <laughs> Um, still in the bank at this morning, coronavirus. Shut all borders now. Senate, House of Reps, NMA, orders. As Nigerians confirms third case of coronavirus, at least 730 people from high risk countries enter Nigeria daily. daily. And federal government suspends national sports festival in Edo. Government bans officials from foreign travels. And that you find on page eight of the Vanguard newspaper. Euro plans full border closure will resist attempts to hijack Amoteku, says Agbekoya. And Naira appreciates to 367.57 to the dollar in the I and E window. Senate probes Lagos explosion. UTME anchors jam bars candidates from taking exams over lateness. And COVID-19 will explore all alternatives to protect Nigerians, says President Mohamedou Buhari. Euro plans full border closure. That is what they're planning. And we're still banning our uh, officials from traveling. Shouldn't we at this point be looking at this alternative also, given the state of the pandemic? I would say that basically should be put in place. The truth about it is, um, it's a new strain. Yes. It's not like the Ebola virus. It's a new strain and as such, there's no vaccine for it. Uh, what we're doing is symptomatic treatment. Uh, it's a strain that mutates. And that poses even a threat, even for the, for the, let me, for lack of a better word, the average scientist. It means you need to find out, be thinking two steps ahead of the virus, as yes. it were, to have measures or uh, a therapy that actually addresses it at every point in time, preventing it from mutating. But you don't know what's in the mind, so they're still studying and working on it. That in itself means you need to put measures in place that are stricter than you had during the Ebola crisis, and that's why. Other climbs have said, look, complete closure. Yes. And like I agree with him, on a, on a uh, what do they call it, weighing the risk-benefit ratio, would we have to say, look, we allow you in. But those things need to be put in place mm. 
it will engender a lot of things being addressed rather than just passing it over by the side. Okay. All right. Now, let's put a little bit on the, um, the, the recent explosion at the Abulea Ado um, access in, in, in Lagos. Um, the, it was reported one of the dailies that a, a boy of five battles head injury. And I can only imagine how many people are in our hospitals right now um, battling sustained injuries. Yes, yes, yes. And the Senate is saying they want to probe the Lagos explosion. And Lagos government opens IDP's camps for victims. Um, these are all re re reactionary measures. What can we do to forestall to prevent such occurrences? There, there have been fire outbreaks in Balogo Market and not once, not twice. And somehow somebody tells me it just might still occur again. It seems in this side of the world we're not so much ready to, to handle disasters of, of this nature. Mm -hmm. What are we not looking at, Edward? Uh, I'll, say, I'll say the first thing uh, is the fact that we do not put things in place to ensure that these disasters do not happen. Proactive not, measures? Yes, proactive measures. We do not try as much as possible to prevent these disasters from happening in the first instance. Uh, f uh, like the bomb, uh, the explosion at Abuliado, for instance, uh, it is being said that it is as a, re as a result of a pipeline explosion, gas installation explosion. The fact remains that someone gave people permits to build houses close to a gas or pipeline installation. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. There's also the fact that we do not respond to disaster quickly and promptly sure. and in a manner that shows that we value human lives. Do you understand? Uh, for instance, uh, there, I'm, I'm being informed that presently there's only one excavator on site at Abuleado that is actually looking for people under the rubble. We should expect, people saw the videos, people saw the pictures on social media, we should expect that there's a lot that could be missing in terms of lives and property and really go there and act like there's a serious emergency at stake. But it feels like we're just doing everything for the media. Uh, it took the governor a full day to go there. The governor lives in Lagos. He doesn't live in Paris or live in Holland. He lives in Lagos. It took him a full day to go there to commiserate, to know. And we know how Nigerians are in terms sure. of emergency response. Sure. If you don't see someone high up, people do not start mm -hmm. acting. So why does it take us so long to respond to, uh, to disaster? Yeah. What was really interesting to me, I think sometime was it yesterday and when this explosion happened, after the explosion happened, I saw the Lagos State government, I think he did pay a, a visit to mm -hmm to the president and then showing him pictures of, <laughs> of the explosion from the, uh, from the Abule Ado mm -hmm. axis. I'm just wondering if the president shouldn't have taken its time out. I mean, this, this is somewhat of a national disaster, whether we accept it or not. You know, but nobody's taking responsibility. Like you rightly said, somebody gave the go-ahead, the authority That's for those true. houses That's to be true. constructed mm -hmm. in areas that normally mm -hmm. houses should not be yeah. cited. So, so, like, again, again, we do not value lives in Nigeria. That's what we just need to tell ourselves. Because why is, Lagos is one hour by flight to Abuja. Why is the governor, uh, why is the governor having to go? Oh, of course, we're being told that uh, there was a national executive committee meeting, so the governor took the opportunity to brief the president. But fine, why is the president not coming down to assess the situation by himself, talk to citizens that he swore to protect? and tell them what the federal government is going to do. Even with the coronavirus, it is looking as if the president mm -hmm. has left the responsibility to the governor of Lagos. And Lagos is part of Nigeria. Yeah, because the, 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 the three confirmed cases, it happened, but it, it's in it, Lagos. People, but in flow, but in people, Lagos. Lagos is a hub yeah, of activity. Yes. People, people flow, move yes. from Lagos to everywhere. We do not know if the people who uh, were affected in Abuja yeah. do, if um, they actually live in Lagos. So people might have come to visit Lagos sure. and all that. The president needs to stand up from Abuja and act. It doesn't need to be only when it needs to go and commission projects or go for a Gungo fishing festival that it can uh, leave Asso Rock. It needs to actually lead from the front like he promised at Chatham House when he was contesting for the election. It needs to let people know that he cares about lives and property. True. People died. Even if they are 16, even if they are 2, True. They, they are Nigerians. Yes. They died. If this happened in New York, you would see that people will be questioned. A lot, of, a lot of presidents are under flak right now, mm -hmm. uh, getting a lot of flak right now because of the way they are responding to, to the coronavirus yes. crisis. Yeah. Our own president is hiding behind the Minister of Health and the Lagos State Governor. Seriously? 
All right, thank you very much. Um, Edward Israel Ayide, thank you very much for joining us for All the Press. And also Dr. Menga Ogunlela, thank you very much for joining us on Pleasure. All thank the you. Press. Yeah, thank you for And that's so much we can take this morning on All the Press. Join us again same time tomorrow on Plus TV Africa. I am Benny Ock. Do have a good morning. Stay with us.